Hey guys, it's Meme and my trusty sidekick. Yeah, old Vinny's here. One day you won't be the sidekick. Well, when I'm on your well, channel, you're not the sidekick. Well, yeah, you get to be that day. Yeah, I get to be the sidekick. Um, anyway, welcome in. We are sorry we missed you guys last Sunday. We appreciate your um, patience with us and your forgiveness for us missing last Sunday. And for those of you that were aware, my dad was in the hospital, but he's doing much better. He had knee surgery and they had to get some medicine straightened out for him, but he is doing much better. And we appreciate your prayers for that. He's very, very thankful for that as well. He called me and said, please let everybody know how much he appreciated your prayers for him. So we filmed this portion of prophecy we're fixing to do last week. And the, the um, volume was messed up because I had not, I thought I had one mic. I had two mics left on that weren't supposed to be on. So we have fixed that. All that's going to be taken care of in this video today. And it might, this first prophecy might seem a little rushed. But it's not. It's just that we've already done it. So that's, yeah. it's going to be a little awkward to try to go back and say what we said before. But we're going to do it. It's a very important recreated. part of it. The very important part of prophecy. So sure. um, I'm going to let you jump in and take over. All right. So um, the second prophecy that we're looking at comes to us from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. And it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. To me, beautiful scripture mm -hmm. that tells us about Jesus' is coming. It just uh, really speaks to my heart. The uh, author of the book goes on to say, What nation wouldn't want a leader described as a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, an everlasting father, a prince of peace? No wonder the people of Israel, oppressed by the brutal Roman Empire, Found in this 750-year-old passage by the prophet Isaiah, hope for a military conqueror and a deliverer. But these ancient words actually point to a much bigger plan, to the Lord's eternal strategy for conquering sin and delivering sinners from the unbridgeable distance between them and their holy God. And of the increase of his government and our peace with him, there will be no end. See, what they looked for, because of all of the um, oppression, all the, the captivity, all the abuse they were experiencing from the Roman Empire, they looked for somebody that was going to come clean house, you know, somebody that was going to be... Um, uh, rough and tough. And rough and tough, yeah. that's right. Somebody that was going... Um, you know, clean house, really, you know, somebody that was just going to defend them and represent them, not somebody that was going to be meek and humble and, and lowly. And so that's why so many of them struggled. And even today, you know, they believe Jesus was a great teacher, but not the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So they missed so much because of that. Um, thoughts? My favorite line, the I love all prophecy from Isaiah. I love it. But... When the writer says, what nation wouldn't want a leader described as wonderful, counselor, mighty God, prince of peace? You know, I think about um, what must it be like if, if we had a leader, not just us, but other countries. If we had leaders that were known for being the prince of peace. You know what I'm saying? How different would things be? And again, I understand that um, we need that, you know, strong, mighty hand. But Jesus came with that. He had God. You know what I'm saying? They were, God was the strong, mighty hand. Jesus was the, the prince of peace, you know, the, the counselor. How many times did we see him when he did come counsel with his disciples, counsel, give us counsel mm -hmm. through scripture, right? So it is really interesting. I, I do think what would, what would be different if our country had a leader like Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. What would be different? Well, I mean, what would be different if we were the feet if we of, lived like Jesus. If we were all the feet of Jesus, that's right. <laughs> if we uh, carried ourselves like Jesus, if we loved people like Jesus, if we 
forgave people like Jesus. If I mean, we did, we wouldn't need that rough and toughness. You know what I'm saying? That that right. even that they had hoped they would receive. Yeah. God, I love. I hate when I say this, but I also love it. Here's the deal: God knows what He's doing, right? He, does. he knew what He was doing with Jesus, and He knows what He's doing today. And the reason I don't like when I say that is because. It's almost like sometimes I have to remind myself God knows what he's doing. And I hate that I have to remind myself of that. But I do sometimes. But we have know? to we have to accept that. We sometimes I have to say, Oh, he does know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> like you were surprised. Sometimes I and I don't like that about myself, but sometimes I do it. I'm sure I'm not alone where I have to go, Oh, now I see your plan, right? And that's where we are here. Um, just the beginning of his plan. And we got to see his plan. But it makes sense when we go back and look at the prophecy, what they must have been thinking before. Yeah. So we saw the prophecy of what uh, the scriptures in, in Isaiah told us was going to happen. Then the fulfillment of that prophecy takes place in Luke chapter 1, verses 30 through 33. You want to read that one? I will. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. What a cool scripture. It is really cool. But we talked about this in our discussion last week. Last time, yeah. Even though that y'all didn't get to hear it, we talked about it. How must Mary have felt? Terrified. One. Yes. Right? And but, I don't I mean, know. First of all, she was terrified because, you know, for all practical purposes, a man showed up in her room. <laughs> Just, Just appeared. And he was there, you know. And I don't really know that him telling me not to be afraid would not make really me not help. be afraid. Yeah. yeah. Because even when I tell you that and I'm standing right there, you're like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't right? know if I can trust that or right? not. You know, so... You know, Mary had to freak out that he was there. And, you know, he told her right off the bat, first statement, don't be afraid. When you, oh, excuse me. Sorry. An unremarkable day would soon become an unforgettable one for this young girl named Mary. So the picture there. It's just a regular old day. Nothing's happening. You know, she's probably done all of her chores and or in the, the things of, that she yeah, had to I mean, do. Um, she's, you know, resting, getting ready for bed or whatever when the angel appears. And Of course, I guess we assume it was at night. Yeah, I, I did assume it was I at know, night. I know, we always think that, but, but she could have been carrying clothes in from the wash. I mean, yeah, you don't I mean, know. She could have been hanging them out on the line yeah. or whatever, you know. <clears throat> you just don't ever know where she was, but... Um, he even said maybe she was grinding grain or mending a garment when suddenly a light appeared and an angel spoke. She was terrified. And he said, do not be afraid, the angel told her, as his message actually became quite fearsome. Yeah, because at some point, the light is no longer as scary as what you're telling me. Yeah. She's a, a young girl. She's engaged. She's never physically known a man. And now all of a sudden, this thing that appeared to her, this man that appeared to her in the presence of Gabriel says, hey, you're going to have a baby. And even though she was young, she probably already knew what caused that. And she knew that hadn't happened. There had to be some freak out going on. Oh, sure. And then... I don't even know that at that moment in time there'd be the realization. The realization probably even sets in more as she starts to feel her body start to change. And I would imagine over time she starts to really go. I mean, although she believes, we know from, you know, she she's a willing servant. We know that Mary's willing to do what God wants her to do. But at, I imagine as her body starts to change and it starts to become very real, I can imagine that her thought process is even, even more jumbled. You know, although she seems to stay very focused on the task that God has for her from what we can see from Mary. But I still think at some point you have to go, this is really real. You mm -hmm. know? It, yeah, it's interesting. Well, I mean, I think it's interesting that he said to her, you have found favor mm -hmm. with God. So, I mean, 
there may have been some comfort there for a minute. Oh, I would imagine so. That. Yeah, because I mean, he could have said, I mean, it could have been much worse. He, you know, it could have been bad, but instead it was, you found favor with God. He sees you as the person to do a, a mighty work. You know, yeah. it's pretty incredible. The, the author said, although she was unma an unmarried virgin, Mary would give birth to the Son of God. Gabriel went on to reveal that the child would be a descendant of David and that his kingdom would never end. And so Mary waited for the miracle. How many times do we have to wait? You know, so many times God tells us things are going to happen. You know, we get a peace about something, you know, but then we have to And the problem is we live wait. in the world of the circle, the loading circle yeah. which takes 30 seconds but it makes us feel like five years you know and we're and that a is world really of instant gratification it's really become a problem for for many of us because i mean think about it like in our home if the internet is slow oh i yeah. want to go you have internet it's like yeah. when i was your age we didn't have internet you know imagine that and we get in this but i want it now i want it now i want it now and sometimes it's not for now and where jesus was concerned he had a path he had to walk, you yeah. know? Um, and Mary was part of that. She was one of the, one of the very first steps in yeah. the whole process. Probably the first step, because, I mean, you know, that's where it all started. The with first her earthly the step. Yeah, the first um, one on earth. So we saw the prophecy, and we saw the fulfillment of that prophecy in Scripture. Now let's look at the promise that God made to Mary. And this is the thing we have to focus our attention on. Not not just the prophecy that he predicted it would happen or uh, Isaiah said it would happen and then it did happen. But as it went along with that, you know, Mary had to be, again, like we said, freaking out a little bit over what was being told to her. And then all of a sudden the promise comes, you know, and I think the promise is what gives us peace, you know. So you want to read the promise? Oh, you want me to? I'll read it. Okay. Um, blessed is she who believed, for there will be fulfillment of those things which were told to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with the good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. That's from Luke 1, 45 through 55. So what jumps out at you there? Her acknowledgement of his power. Yeah. She recognized who he was. Yeah. So that tells us already we know Mary was a woman of faith. Because mm -hmm. first of all, the Bible doesn't tell us. Now, there may have been moments, but the Bible just acts like she just went along with everything. You know, like everything was cool. You know, but this yet. is what he promised. But we still know what that flesh existed in the in the oh, word sure. as well. So we know how people reacted in their flesh. But here at this moment, no matter what led her to this moment, in this moment she's like, okay, you're a great God. You do amazing, miraculous things, and you're using me for that. You know, her acknowledgement of who he was. Do you think like today a lot of times that, there was some pride involved in that she was chosen. It's interesting because she points that out. Did you hear that where she says, um, he has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. Like she points that out. There could have been, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe she's saying, cause how many times we have to say, God, forgive me where my pride got in the way. You know what I'm saying? Maybe she's acknowledging that. Yeah. She could have been. I don't know. I we, wonder. We don't know. I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> Only God knows. <laughs> Well, and Mary. And Mary. So yeah. then the author says this. From all appearances, Mary was an ordinary girl living in a one-stoplight town. 
when an amazing moment revealed both her extraordinary character and her uncommon faith in her unseen and ever faithful God. Believing the angel's outrageous claim that she would give birth to God's son and completely trusting that the Almighty would enable her to walk that path. Now, what does that path involve? That path involves, from the beginning, the ridicule because she was not married. Yeah. Um, and now, all of a sudden, she's pregnant. How many people today would believe a young girl that said, I'm having it's God's immaculate. son. It's immaculate. Like, I didn't do anything. Right. Nobody would believe And that. how many fiancés? Would step in where David did. No, where Joseph did. Where Joseph did <laughs> and be there, mm -hmm. you know. Had the angel not visited him. We haven't got there. Oh, yeah. I haven't got to that far. <laughs> That's coming. So, anyway, he goes on to say, um, where did I leave Believe off? Believe in the angel's outrageous claim. Yeah, believe in oh, the no, no, no. I, read I went ahead back uh, here. Okay. No. I didn't read that part. I, okay, let's go back to here. Believing the angel's outrageous claim that she would give birth to God's son and completely trusting that the Almighty would enable her to walk that path, Mary yielded, surrendered, yielded her life, her body to her creator. Despite the cost to her, which was great, despite the public shame and her derailed dreams, you know, she had plans that she saw for her life. All that got put on the side. Mary was a model of humble and willing submission to the Lord's plans. And the world has celebrated her obedience to God for more than 2,000 years. For behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. I don't believe she was saying that in a prideful way. I no. think she was saying... People will see this as a blessing, regardless of the path I'm fixing to walk. Mm -hmm. People will see this as God's blessing on me. Yeah? Yeah. Pretty cool. Although, I look at Mary in her path, and we haven't got there yet. We're jumping ahead. But when I think of Mary, I always think of, ooh, the moment at the foot of the cross. Like I, And I can't even talk about it because mm -hmm. of all the paths she had to walk, gosh, I can't imagine what she felt. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like we th we talk about this and the beauty of the birth and but gosh, she had to be there for him even to death, knowing yeah, what it was for. Walking that path not only meant the humiliation of being pregnant, not married. It also meant the path to Golgotha where Jesus was going to die on Calvary. I mean, whew. Just that um, I can't even discuss. I can't even get through it. I can't discuss yeah. that. It's like I can't imagine her not. I, and she and she probably did say, "Just stop. Just stop. You know, just don't do it. Just mm -hmm. let it go." It was her son, regardless. He was still her son. I can't imagine all the unbelievable love that a parent has for a child. She had. I can't imagine how she did it, and I and I respect her. I call her I call her blessed, but wow. You know, sometimes we look at our path and we go, is this a blessing? <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. And sometimes it's what other people see in you that is the blessing. It's where you lead other people with your faith and your strength. And I think Mary did a lot of that. Yeah. Um, after this prophecy and fulfillment of the prophecy and the promise... They put in the words to one of my favorite Christmas carols. Will you help me sing it? One of your favorites? Well, yeah. Because you know all of them are all you my favorite. All. Will you help me sing it? Are the words in here? No. Right here they are. Oh, they are? Are we going to do the classic Baptist thing, do the first and last? No, I won't do all of them. <laughs> I love all three verses. Will okay. Mm -hmm. Away in a manger. No crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky look down where he lay. The little Lord 
Lord Jesus, asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus. Look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is night. This is my favorite verse. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask Thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and take us to heaven to live with thee there thanks you're welcome you're I love to welcome. sing with you. It's oh, fun. That's cool. It's fun. Oh, what a great Christmas carol. One of my absolutely one of my favorites. Let's look at the next prophecy. We're going to do two this week because we missed last week. Because we missed last week. So um, this prophecy comes to us from Psalms chapter forty-five, verses six and seven. Won't you read it for us? <laughs> Your throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Wow. I read that last line incorrectly. Would you like to read it again? Therefore, God, your God, that's how I should have emphasized it, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Yeah. So an unmistakable sense of joy fills the air. The crowd's excited anticipation is unmistakable. Everyone in the realm is joining in this celebration of the king's reign. The almighty God has anointed Jesus, our savior, to rule with justice and uprightness over all history. As he reigns for eternity with unwavering and holy righteousness, King Jesus will bring joy and gladness to his people, and more important, glory and honor to his Father. The King of kings and Lord of lords will come as a bridegroom seeking his bride to reign forever with joy and gladness. Hebrews chapter 1 verses 10 through 12 says, You, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. And they will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will fold them up and they will be changed, but you are the same. And that's the fulfillment of the scripture that we just read from Psalms 45, 6 through 7. And that again comes from Hebrews chapter 1, verses 10 through 12. So what do you think about that what grabbed you there always peace joy love always that's what always grabs me first because that's who jesus is right but then also and god never changes yeah the All, same that's right yesterday today and forevermore mm -hmm. always the same we can look at him from the old testament and he's the same god in the new testament mm -hmm. the wheel turns and he goes from this God of wrath in the Old Testament, but a God of love, a God that protected his people, his, and through all the mess they went through, 
he had to discipline them and they went through some tough times because they refused to be obedient. In the New Testament, we see the other side of him, the God of love, that sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us to pay the ultimate price, the final payment for our sin. So you see both sides of him. He is God of love and peace and joy and all that, but he is still a God of wrath for those that don't accept his gift of salvation. So what a cool thing. Can you imagine if, like I've thought about this before, you know how you may have sat through a sermon like this or something where they've said, how do you picture God? And, you know, what do you think of him? And some people will say they picture him kind of like they, they, um, what's the word, compare him to their earthly fathers. And that's, mm-hmm. that's not always good because sometimes we don't have a great relationship with our earthly fathers. And so we might see God that way. But I think about that. and But we, unfortunately, we do see God that way. Which is, which is not good. But I think about that. And here's what I think about it. And I, and not throwing shade on my dad or anybody's dad, but you know, my dad can change. You know, he may feel this way today and this way tomorrow. He's mm-hmm. human. And if I had to go to a God and go, how are you today? Is today a good day? Should I, should I approach you today? <laughs> you know, how, how would that be if we, that's why I love that he doesn't change. I don't have to go to him and wonder how he's going to react to something. Because, you know, you know even in our house, the kids know it's when it's a good a time day. to come to dad or to mom, or is this a day I need to hide in my room? And fortunately, and stay away? And fortunately for us, we do change. We as people mm-hmm. and as Christians, we mature, and this is good. But God is there, you know. And I and I can't imagine what it'd be like if I if we believed in a God that had mood swings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't imagine what that would be like. And I love that he never changes. And I love that his goal has always been to live in eternity with us, to have a relationship with us, to fellowship with us. And he had to pay the ultimate price to make that happen, you know, with Jesus, with his son. But we, that's his goal the whole time is us all through scripture. You know, it's always us. And I, and that's what I hear here. I want you to read this because when I read this earlier, it, it really spoke to me. From the beginning of time, Jesus has been present. He was with the Father and the Spirit when the earth was formed and the waters were separated from the land. Through the millennia, land forms have changed. In the course of a year, some seasons come and go. In contrast to this constant change, Jesus has remained and will forever remain the same. Holy, good, strong, loving, faithful, powerful, and wise. So as the events of the world and the details of life whirl around you, Know that Jesus will not change. He is a rock and he will never fail you. Isn't that awesome? Can you, I mean, it's just so comforting because I just can't imagine what it would be like if he did change. And if he, all the things we just got through saying about ourselves, you know, I can't imagine what that would be like and how we would cope as his children. I'm grateful that God doesn't change, I'm grateful that he's the same, you know. This is funny. I'll tell a funny little quick story. When my brother was little, <laughs> when my brother was little, he had to do, uh, he went to Christian school and he had to do a uh, report from some book of the Bible. I don't remember what it was, but he was running around that. He had left his backpack at school, not uncommon. So his Bible he normally uses was at school in his backpack. So he's running around the house looking for a Bible and um, he's, for some reason, he stops in the living room at the table where my mom had the family Bible under, like we had a coffee table, we had a glass top, and then at the bottom it had a shelf, and the family Bible sat right there on that shelf. You could see it through the glass top, you know? So he runs in there, and he stops, and he looks at it, and he picks it up. And when he does, it was kind of dusty. It'd been, <laughs> you know, the big old family Bibles. He picks it up, he goes like this. And then he goes, hey, Mom, is this thing up to date? Because he's thinking it's an old volume of the word or something like an encyclopedia. And it was so funny because mom said, yes, it is up to date today, you know, tomorrow and forever. It will always be up to date. And so when people say if Jesus was here, he would do things different. I don't believe he would do a single thing different. No. I believe he'd do exactly what he did. And when, and, and correctly, when other, when people decide to take the scripture and interpret it their own ways, and add to and take away and decide that this is not correct and that is not correct because in this day and age, things are different. No, 
our moral fiber changes, right? but the scripture does not. People decide to change, but the scripture stays the same. And I think it's important we point that out. Um, everyone listening knows what I mean by that. Whenever I say our moral fiber changes, things around you will start. Look, look let me say this because I'll get on this. People will get on the soapbox toward me or I can hear them saying this stuff. But here's what I say. Scripture tells us this is going to happen. Oh, yeah. Don't be shocked. Don't sit back and go, I cannot believe our country's turning into this or our world's turning into this. Well, then you hadn't read the scripture. You know, because again, prophecy. It tells us it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And we're, and we're going to deal with it. But I saw when we turned the page to this promise that you just got all I love this <laughs> scripture. John 1, 14. I love this scripture. Our pastor quoted it from the... Um, no, no, no. Someone quoted it in my Sunday school class this week. And I love this scripture. So it's one of my favorites. Do you want me to read the promise and let you read the scripture? Either one. It doesn't matter. All right. So it says, Have you ever received a one-of-a-kind gift? Something unique, completely unlike anything you have ever seen or even heard of. When the Apostle John referred to Jesus as the only begotten, the only begotten of the Father, the original Greek means unique or one of a kind. And as God's gift to us, Jesus, who is both fully God and fully man, is indeed unique. Yet, as the Lamb of God who died on the cross on behalf of sinful humanity, Jesus is not a gift to be hoarded. Hmm. What will you do to share your one-of-a-kind gift of Jesus with someone this season? I love how he discusses Jesus. The first does. thing everyone always struggles with, he is fully God and fully man. Okay? How can you be that? I understand. We can't. That's right. That's the thing. He can and is and was, right? And then it says, what I love is he's not a gift to be hoarded. So many times people will, this is going to, this might be touchy. I don't know. They'll come to church. They'll sit on a pew. They'll get their Jesus and they'll leave. That's not what Jesus is. It's not even what he taught. He taught for us to share him with others, to spread the word. You know, how will you use your platform? People say to me sometimes, like, it's really interesting because even the people we go to church with don't really know what we do like this, you know, and mm -hmm. I'll, they don't understand that we do these kind of Bible study things and we and we share Jesus this way. But when you have a platform and you're a believer, you need to use it for him. Yep. And I feel like we try really hard to do that. And I think we don't hide how we feel about the Lord and right. how and what the Lord means to us and can mean to you or does mean to you. And so um, he's not a gift to be hoarded. And this scripture, I want to read this because I absolutely love this. I thought you um, would. Because it's just amazing. Listen, John 1, 1 through 5, and then 14 at the end. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things that were made through him and without him, nothing that was made was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. The darkness did not comprehend it. All the naysayers, all the people who said he's not the Messiah, the darkness in them could not comprehend it. And it's the same today. Same today. Same today. And then the word became flesh. A lot of people don't realize whenever the scripture says, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word, the word was with God and the word was God. This is the Trinity. They, they've always been. They've always been together from the beginning. And so when the word became flesh, this means that Jesus stepped out, to quote David, into the cosmos his own hands had made. Right? Mm -hmm. And he becomes one of us to teach us about his father. You see? To teach us about God. And he becomes flesh just like us. Because if he hadn't, just like what happened to Mary, be not afraid. We'd be afraid. Right? Right? He comes, he dwells amongst his friends, he speaks to the people, he heals people, he shares love the whole time he's here. It's just amazing to me. I love to think about him as flesh. I don't like what he had to go through in the flesh. 
Right. I don't like it at all. I don't like what we go through in the flesh sometimes, right? Yeah. But I just love this scripture, and I love to think of him. I, I love to think of the fact that God loved us enough to become flesh for us, to lead us, to literally hold our hands. And then what I love about this section saying he's not a gift to be hoarded, not only did he come to us, but he came to us so we could share that as him to others. He couldn't stay. He had to pay the price for sin, but he lets us be flesh to share him with everyone else. It's yeah. cool. I looked up the lyrics to the song because I knew, you know, I wanted to I can just it. quote them for you. I'm sure you could, <laughs> and I probably could too, but... You should clarify because I just said David. Yeah, this is a song that's written by David Phelps, who's one of our favorite Christian artists. It's called One Wintry Night. Uh, if you've never looked it up, please look it up and, and listen watch it. Listen to it and, and listen watch to it. It. Oh. Um, it says this, uh, Just a simple maiden with her hands stretched out to God, saying, Lord, thy will be done, I will abide. Just a simple stable. Looking back, it does seem odd that God himself would enter there inside. But one wintry night, the starry universe went whirling upside down and everything that was, was not the same. One wintry night, a supernatural birth left heaven and earth spellbound as the mysterious, omniscient took a name. Darkness fled from light, wrong. <laughs> Wrong was made right in just one wintry night. Whew. It's amazing, isn't it? It's just hard to fathom a love like that. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I fathom it. Yeah. You know, we were talking about that a little bit about folks that, that don't understand it. Because there's only two kinds of folks, and they are saved and lost. And when you don't understand it, I struggled for a long time with that mentality of not understanding it. But then it was pointed out to me in Scripture that that is exactly what Scripture says. It says that, you know, the ways of God or the things of God are foolishness to those who don't believe. And um, it's we get emotional because we get it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because the Holy Spirit reminds us of what has happened and... Because and I, what we what he did, I can fathom. I can see what he's done for me. I mean, I can. I can't imagine how he had the strength to get through it, except through God. But I can see what he did to save me, and I and I know it, and I believe. And I it. think the most important thing is that we believe what he did mm -hmm. for us. We we believe that this little baby grew. To an adult and then surrendered his life to pay the price for me and for you and for everybody watching today. Mm -hmm. He died on the cross for us. And then God miraculously raised him from the dead. And because of that, we can have eternal life. You're jumping ahead. No, I'm <laughs> We're supposed to be talking this prophecy as we're going. No. It's all right. You guys know, you know what happened, but it's so cool to look back at the, at the prophecy and see. Yeah. Isn't it just awesome? I love it. All right, guys, that's weeks two and three. Um, yeah. Next week, we won't, we won't say. If you have the book, I didn't mention the book. If you don't have the book, this is the one we're using, The Hope of Christmas. It's written by um, Jack, what's his last name? Carpenter? No. Countryman. Countryman. Jack Countryman. And um, you can find this anywhere books are sold. We've seen it all over the place. You can find it in hardback. You can find it like this. Either way you want to pick that up. You don't have to pick it up. You can listen and we're pretty much going through every single thing about it. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll pick up again next week and don't give any heads up of where we're I going. Won't. I won't. All right, guys. I hope you're enjoying this. This week is Thanksgiving coming That's up. Right. The, the, the next Thursday is Thanksgiving. We hope you guys have an amazing Thanksgiving. We will be doing our Sunday video. You will still get it. We're not going to pause over Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, I will be pausing. I won't be doing a Thursday video or a Saturday video next week. I'm going to take a little time off, spend with my family, and we'll see you guys on Sunday. So I hope you guys enjoy your time with your family too. And why don't you say a prayer for everybody, a Thanksgiving prayer, since we won't see them before then. I'll do that. Let's pray together. Thank you, God, so much for all your blessings. God, there's just... No way I, I could name them all. I want to thank you today for Jesus 
and for the the fact that you knew even in the beginning that even before you created us that that we would stumble and that we would turn our back on your plan and that you would need something to get us back to you god i thank you that you prepared a way for me to get back to you you gave me your son jesus to die on a cross for me to save me from my sins and to reconcile our relationship god i pray that as we are thankful this week for what you have done for us god help us to be thankful for our country Help us to be thankful that we live in a country where today we're still free to worship you. God, I thank you for my family. I thank you for this extended family that we're talking with today. God, just bless them. Remind them of who you are during this season so that they can comprehend and understand what you did for them. God, help us to be mindful of that. As we celebrate Thanksgiving, thank you again for what you've done for us. I thank you for this book and how it's already impacting my life, just reminding me that you had a plan from the beginning. 750 years earlier, you had a plan, and you knew, well, really, way before that, but you introduced it to us so far in advance. You already knew what would have to happen to reconcile and restore us to you. And I thank you for that. I pray, God, your blessings on us all. I pray, God, this time that we share today would impact and touch somebody's life. You promised me in your word that your word would not return unto you void, but would accomplish what you please. So today, God, I put my trust in that scripture and lean on you. I thank you again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope you guys have a great week and a great Sunday, and we will see you guys again next Sunday. Bye, guys. Bye.